been that you know, the rest of the season we have been guys in the water law. Barry, Mark, three three nine point three. Back tower, Barry, Mark, zero five nine point three. Barry Point Light, Barry, Mark, one 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 nine point six. On board, told you on track, recommend course three zero seven. I'll tell Reese what you're doing. Kind of the signal tower team where we're at. Alright. Signal tower, Barry, Mark. Two two five point two. Here's Navigator, get mark the turn. Very point light, bearing. 125.4. Shot 76, mark. 109.7. That's not what I'm talking about. That's 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 what I'm talking about. Start with uh, 319. 244 is the course. 244. Bridge out, 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 Mark. One zero three point six. Beacon seventeen. Bearing. Mark. Two four three point four. You're on. Fifty yards. Right of tracks are beyond that. Mm -hmm. But that's that's silent. And as a matter of fact, you, you, maybe you don't know. Some of the guys do it. Yet. There was special sand on the inside of those, the core of those propeller shafts. And there had to be a special, special sand that the Navy gave us. And it had to be vibrated. It was stood on end, like, you know, like so vertical. And vibrated. All 60 feet of the ship? Oh, yeah. No, no, not the ship. The, the, the shaft. shaft. No. The shaft. I mean, and, and it had to have a certain compression. And uh, it, this, is, this is why a lot of these things cost money. Again, to deaden the sound and have that shaft be as perfect as perfect could be. So you mean there's so sand inside, inside the shaft? Inside, yeah. That's interesting. Well, that's confidential, but I guess it's out now. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go to jail. No. We've got that recorded. That's no. right. Sure. Sure. I could write a book about Admiral Rickland. I was forced to. I was a bunch of chief of naval operations. Office. But I was supposed to be the liaison between CMO and Rickover's organization. We started out in pretty good relations, but I started crossing a little. <laughs> Finally, I ended up as that bad guy over that white haired captain in your office. And when I came to Subpack staff in uh, 1960, Rickover had called uh, Admiral Benson and said, if you don't want that guy Cooper on your staff, he's going to follow you up. <laughs> I want to say one thing about Adam Rickover, and this is on the positive side. If it had not been for him and the characteristics that he had, we would not made the advance that we did. That's right. The, the, the DOD right. was over there trying to tell the Navy all types of reactor programs to develop and everything else. I don't know anybody else who could have stood up against that type of pressure. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I was sorry to see that uh, in his later years that he was punished by the Navy for allegedly accepting some gifts for his wife that I think combined weren't more than fifty or sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Because for a long, long time it was customary if somebody commissioned a ship the gift was given to the person who commissioned the ship. Sure, that's right. And it may be known that he rode third class on planes all over the world, you know, saving the Navy money. 
and uh, really was truly dedicated to uh, the development. He hadn't, as you say, but we made it okay. I wasn't talking about the negative things. And then he did. I, I could spend two hours or three hours on those, <laughs> <laughs> including trying to ruin my career. But that, that uh, was the point I wanted to make. I want to make the point that we are where we are today in the submarine force because of Admiral Ripley. Yeah. What he, he insisted on no was perfection, as close to perfection as you can get. Yeah. Right. In but let me throw something out. Right here. Uh, I have another mic case. Me, and that is the uh, mic case. The United right States on. does not have any. It's too much. Besides no, this I vessel, another, another mic case uh, here. This is the last one. Right the diesel submarines and the cemetery. Uh, don't you think that that's really a strategic mistake? Don't you think there is a role for, uh, for diesel submarines in the Navy? Well, I'm not going to answer that directly, but I will say that they'll never build a nuclear boat as quite as a diesel boat. Do everything they can to improve the quietness of your, of your sonar ship. But they'll never get that point as a diesel boat. You shut down your batteries, you shut down all your power equipment on board. Yeah. You just you know, have to get you actively. If you're going to get your but I won't get into the debate whether you should have them or not. I'll simply say the debate goes on. It seems to be here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. late. Yeah. It really yeah. does. Uh, I, mean, well, I appreciate your views on it. It does seem to be here. So, the nuclear submarine is an attack submarine for long range mission missiles. Ballistic missiles, which is a role for producing a submarine around the island coast. Producing a much cheaper, but I'll tell you the limits of the battery delivery. Just, you know, really tight. You've got to be up there every night. Every time you get on the surface, you're dead. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to tell you, if you've spent a couple of hours, say about six guys, on the stern planes and then steering, turning that wheel. And that can be awesome. It takes a lot of very young, very strong bands. I remember that. I remember starting to see the other guys. They were younger and they were stronger. You used to be young and strong. I mean, well, moderately. What <laughs> <laughs> uh, year was that? That was 40. 44, 45. You got a couple of Navy crosses. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they came all together. First command is 45. Latterman. Latterman, summer 45. What'd you say? He was a real common guy. First thing he did when he came on board, he was talking to what top side. Thompson, I trusted his officers. Yeah. <laughs> he slept up there a lot. When the my skipper, when the war started, uh, had his bunker. Yeah, we, 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 we didn't have any radar. Yeah. 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 Next to the skin? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we'll be sending it off in a plastic bag here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, basically, uh, just your name. Spell your last name for us, and then we have it on videotape. It's a lot uh, less susceptible to human error that way. Uh, whether you were a submarine or if not, you know, what your military affiliation was. Uh, anything that you might, you know, feel is helpful to us uh, in writing our story. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, great. The submarine. We'll just leave it here. I guess it's picking it up well enough. Start here. You're on camera. Start here. Okay. Uh, I'm James A. Stanton. I'm a civilian. Uh, I was not in the Navy. Uh, I'm an attorney, and I'm involved with the uh, Navy League again, both as an attorney. Last name is spelled S T A N T O N. Three one four three six seven seven five four. <laughs> I'm Francis Cooper, Captain U.S. Navy, retired. I was a submariner. Spent all but two years of my career in submarines. In the days when you had to have two years' experience on surface ships before you could go into submarines. 
my social security number is four nine zero nine zero eight eight. Stan Nichols. N i c h o l l s. Retired. Navy. Somewhere here. Thirty years in the Navy. Back as a civil servant. With some hat. I was a member of the submarine veterans of World War II. And I'm enjoying the trip. Mm -hmm. I'm Jack McGarity, MC, G A R R I T Y. I wasn't in the service. I'm the architect for the Bullfin and the Bullfin's board. And I'm really enjoying this, by the way. I'm Bob Tanner, T A N N E R. I was in the Navy, but not submarines, unfortunately. I'm president of the Pacific Fleet Submarine Memorial Association, and I'm really thrilled to be. Uh, permitted to come on board as well as trip. I'm Frank Gregory, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y. I'm retired reserve uh, Navy, and uh, I was a yeah. I was a pilot during World War II, and uh, I've always admired the submarines. The same one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is just a, a thrill for me to, uh, to be on board the, the last trip. Thank you. I'm George Lamb, um, LADD. <clears throat> I was on submarines during World War II. Mm -hmm. Seems like a hundred years ago. <laughs> and uh, I was a master third. And I'm just absolutely delighted to be here. And, it's a wonderful thing. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Don't mean to interrupt the ceasefires. Yes, the ones that are attacked. Yeah. And nuclear is so much power. Why the circle of ship under which is the story? That's why I understand. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, you can't pick that up from anything. Uh, when, when the war was over, I mean, it was huh. really laughable. And it gets no better than the war. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that was a Japanese submarine. Uh, you were going oh, down. I had the rim pack. They were in the check. They were in the check. I'm not sure it was any safer. Yes. Yes. The, the channel and then the last guy down was the 